All right, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part 10 of the fire series. I think this is going to be the end. This one will be the end of the Old Testament. And then in part 11, if my planning works well, will be the New Testament. Now, the New Testament fire is going to be, I think it's going to be more interesting. The Old Testament is always the foundation. And, you know, that's why I always spend so much time in the Old Testament. It's really sadly neglected. Of course, if uh, people read the Old Testament, they would find out that they're, most of their preachers are a bunch of liars, but uh, that's why they won't touch it. The preachers, that is. They won't touch it because it'll prove them wrong. So, all right, let's get going here. All right, let's go to the book of Ezekiel, and we're going to go in chapter 28, and we're going to start in verse 11. Now, this is just, I'm just pointing something out. It says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Now, Ezekiel was written many hundreds of years after the Garden of Eden and Adam and Eve. So, obviously, this couldn't be a human king, the king of Tyrus. Who was the king of Tyrus? Probably Satan himself. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Created, not born. So obviously, the only, the only human that was created and not born, well, Adam, and I guess Eve, and uh, you can say Jesus had a body prepared for him, but yet he was born, born of a woman, right? So... The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Thou art the anointed cherub. What's a cherub? It's an angel. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. And I believe Satan was one of the uh, anointed cherubs that covered the mercy seat. You ever heard of the Ark of the Covenant? They had the two angels with their wings facing toward each other. I believe one of those was Satan himself until he fell. But that's just my opinion. And if you got a different idea, hey, I won't tell you you're wrong because your opinion's as good as mine. Because I, you know, but it just says, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones, the stones of fire. Did you know that upon the holy mountain of God, there's stones of fire? And the anointed cherub walked up and down in them. Huh. Huh. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity 
was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. Violence. What kind of violence? The war in heaven. Didn't we read about the war in heaven in Revelation? By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. Doesn't it say there was war in heaven and Satan was cast out of heaven? Oh, yeah. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. Is an angel, isn't uh, Satan called an angel of light? Oh, yeah. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. Um, is this the lake of fire? I think so. Verse 19. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. Boy, the way I read this, looks like Satan's going to be have an end. That's, that's, that's my take anyways. All right, let's keep going somewhere else. All right, let's go to Jeremiah chapter 23. Uh, let's see. Let's start in verse 28. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? So what's a dream compared to the word of the Lord? It's chaff. Now, if those of you that don't know it, the chaff is the stuff of the wheat that you can't eat. It's the fluff around it. And you take the wheat kernels and you grind them up, mix it with a little sugar and yeast, and bake it, and you got bread. But the chaff, the chaff is just the, the fluff around it. You can't eat it. What do you do with chaff? You burn it. That's exactly what you do with it. So the prophet that has a dream is likened unto chaff. The word of God is likened unto the wheat. All right, let's go to the next verse. Verse 29, Jeremiah 23, 29. Is not my word like as a fire? Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. All right, let's turn your Bibles to Ezekiel chapter 39. Uh, I, you know, I believe, this is what I believe, that Gog and Magog are the people currently occupying Jerusalem. 
they were from an area of Turkey. And, but you got to realize this was before the Islamic Ottoman Turks invaded that area. Now, if you take a look at the, uh, I've considered the Jewish encyclopedia to be a wealth of information. You have two branches of Jewry. You have the Shepardic, which came from the Middle East, and they settled, oh, a lot of different places. They settled in Italy, Spain, Portugal, and a number of other places. They were from the Middle East. Some of them are probably a remnant of true Judah. Others are probably descended of, you know, God only knows what, but uh, possibly Cain, Canaan, uh, Ishmael, I don't know. But the Ashkenazi branch of Jews, by their own admission, are part of Japheth. They're not even from Shem. And if you've never studied that out, in Genesis 6, Shem was to be the chosen seed. Japheth was not. He could be accepted into the chosen seed after a period of time. But the Eastern European, Yiddish-speaking ones, are a Turkish of Turkish extraction in that in that what is that area you Chesaria look up King Bulan B U L A N in the Jewish Encyclopedia you can read about how he converted to Judaism and they created a language called Yiddish I mean Yiddish looks like Hebrew but they can't read Hebrew they, you hand them a Bible in he, written in Hebrew, Old Testament, they can say some words, but if you ask them to translate it into English, they can't do it because it's not Hebrew. It just looks like Hebrew. The words are different. It's very closely akin to Polish and German. And that's the area that they lived in. They were the Polish, Ukrainian, Lithuania, uh, that, that area. And I believe that they are Gog. I, I, it's just, I think so. Take a look in the, in the uh, first few chapters of Genesis and, you know, but that's beyond the scope of this study. Maybe one day I'll do it, but, uh, you know, Let's take a look at Ezekiel 39. That's what I believe. You know, I might be right, I might be wrong. I can't, you know, I don't know. Therefore, the son of, thou son of man, prophesy against Gog and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. Tubal was a, uh, you've heard of Tubal Cain? Yeah. Now, if you've never read the Old Testament, you don't know what I'm talking about. People, you need to get into the Old Testament, especially Genesis. Genesis, as far as I'm concerned, Genesis is one of the most important books of the Bible. All right, verse 2. And I will come, and I will turn thee back, and leave but the sixth part of thee, and will cause thee to come up from the north parts north parts and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. Now, what's north of Israel? Europe. And where are these Ashkenazi ones from? They're from Eastern Europe. Verse 3. And I will smite thy bow out of thy left hand and will cause thine arrows to fall out of thy right. Thou shalt Fall upon the mountains of Israel, thou and all thy bands, and the people that is with thee. I will give thee unto the ravenous birds of every sort, and to the beasts of the field to be devoured. 
Thou shalt fall upon the open field, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. All right, I'm going to go to Revelation real quick. I think what we've just read matches Revelation 19, Revelation 19, 19, verse 19 and chapter 19. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the throne and against his army. You know, people, Satan's children are gathering in the land of Israel to fight against the king of king, king of kings and lord of lords, against Christ. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Lake of fire. We're going to come back to that. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Isn't that what we just read? Isn't that what we just read? I think so. Ezekiel 39, verse 4. I will give thee unto the ravenous birds of every sort and to the beasts of the field to be devoured. Verse 5. Thou shalt fall upon the open field, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. And I will send a fire, a fire on Magog, and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles. And they shall know that I am the Lord. So will I make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not let them pollute my holy name any more. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Behold, it is come, and it is done, saith the Lord God. This is the day whereof I have spoken. And they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth and shall set set on fire and burn the weapons, both the shields and the bucklers, the bows and the arrows, and the hand staves and the spears, and they shall burn them with fire seven years. How long is the, uh, the great tribulation and the time of Jacob's trouble? About seven years. Can you imagine uh, uh, all the weapons burning for Seven years? Wow. Huh. So that they shall take no wood out of the field, neither cut down any out of the forest. For they shall burn the weapons with fire, and they shall spoil those that spoil them, and rob those that rob them, saith the Lord God. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will give unto Gog a place there of graves, Graves in Israel, the valley of the passengers on the east of the sea, and it shall stop the noses of the passengers, and there shall they bury Gog and all his multitude, and they shall call it the valley of Hamangog. And seven months shall the house of Israel be burying them, that they may cleanse the land." Yea, all the people of the land shall bury them, and it shall be to them a renown the day that I shall be glorified, saith the Lord God. And they shall sever out men of continual employment, passing through the land to bury with the passengers those that remain upon the face of the earth to cleanse it. After the end of seven months shall they search." And the passengers that pass through the land, when any seeth a man's bone, then shall he set up a sign by it, till the barriers have buried it in the valley of Haman Gog. And also the name of the city shall be Hamanah, 
thus shall they cleanse the land. And thou, son of man, thus saith the Lord God, speak unto every feathered fowl and to every beast of the field, assemble yourselves and come, gather yourselves on every side to my sacrifice, that I do sacrifice for you, even a great sacrifice upon the mountains of Israel, that ye may eat flesh and drink blood. God's going to give the uh, birds a sacrifice. Verse 18. Ye shall eat the flesh of the mighty and drink the blood of the princes of the earth, of rams, of lambs, and of goats, of bullocks, all of them fatlings of Bashan. And ye shall eat fat till ye be full and drink blood till ye be drunken of my sacrifice, which I have sacrificed for you. Thus ye shall be filled at my table with horses and chariots, with mighty men, and with all men of war, saith the Lord God. And I will set my glory among the heathen, and all the heathen shall see my judgment that I have executed, and my hand that I have laid upon them. So the house of Israel shall know that I am the Lord their God from that day forward and forward. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity because they trespassed against me. Therefore hid I my face from them and gave them into the hand of their enemies. So fell they all by the sword. According to their uncleanness and according to their transgressions have I done unto them and hid my face from them. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel, and will be jealous for my holy name. After that, they have, they have borne their shame and all their trespasses, whereby they have trespassed against me, when they dwelt safely in their land, and none made them afraid. When I have brought them again from the people and gathered them out of their enemies' lands, there's going to come a time we're going to be gathered out of the enemies' lands, and am sanctified in them in the sight of many nations. Then shall they know that I am the Lord their God, which caused them to be led into captivity among the heathen. But I have gathered them unto their own land, and have left none of them any more there. Neither will I hide my face any more from them, for I poured out my spirit upon the house of Israel, saith the Lord God. And that happened on the day of Pentecost, didn't it? On the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts, when Christ was resurrected after being crucified, God poured out his spirit upon the house of Israel, of those that believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh yeah, we read that earlier, didn't we? In one of the previous studies, I don't remember which one, but... We did read that. All right. All right, let's read uh, Joel chapter 2. Now, now, there are people that will tell you that the day of the Lord and that the day of Christ are two different events. They'll say the day of Christ is the pre-trib rapture, and then others will say the day of the Lord is when he returns. But I got a question. If they're saying the day of the Lord and the day of Christ are different, aren't they denying that Jesus Christ is Lord? I mean, think about it. I think so. Personally, I think the day of Christ and the day of the Lord is the same event at the end of the tribulation, period. All right, so I know we've prob we've covered this a little bit, but I'm going to read this whole chapter because I think it ties in pretty good. And then we're going to go hit the New Testament in the next, probably the next, yeah, the next study. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, Joel chapter 2, verse 1, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Didn't we read about the holy mountain? Yeah. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, 
as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong. There hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire, a fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing, nothing shall escape them. Their appearance of them is as the appearance of horses and of horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap, like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble, as a strong people set in battle array. Before their face the people shall be much pained, all faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men, they shall climb the wall like men of war, and they shall march every one on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his path, and when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the walls. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. Listen to this. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark. And the stars shall withdraw their sign shining. This is talking about the end times, people. We read this in, in Revelation. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. This is the Lord's army. For his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning and rend your heart and not your garments and turn turn unto the Lord your God for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger and of great kindness and repenteth him of the evil see people if God's gracious, merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness. And if you turn from your wicked ways, he'll repent and turn from the evil that he was going to bring upon us. Verse 14. Who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God? Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breasts. Yeah, I know we just read this, but it's worth repeating. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests and the ministers of the Lord weep between the porch and the altar and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is their God? And that's what's happening in South Africa right now, people. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and you shall be satisfied therewith. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen, but I will remove Far off from you, the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate, and his face toward the east sea, and his hinder port toward the utmost sea, and his stink shall come up, and his ill savor shall come up, because he hath done great things. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And the floor shall be full of wheat, 
and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. Did you know the locust, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm is the Lord's great army that he sent among us? Yeah. Verse 26. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. I think it was in the book of Psalms. Maybe it was Proverbs. I'm not sure if it was David or Solomon. He said, Lord, please don't make me so rich that I forget you. And don't make me so poor that I curse you. I don't know where that's at. If anybody knows, they can post it. I could probably find it, but you get the idea. Read the book of Judges sometimes. Uh, every time Israel got fat and happy, they forgot the Lord. The Lord would send judgment upon them, a heathen nation to kill and oppress them. And then when they were oppressed and in bondage and in want of everything, I mean, here it is, they'd work the fields for months, then just before harvest, the heathens would come and take all their food. Well, then they would repent and cry out to the Lord. And then the Lord would deliver them. And then they would get fat and happy again, and they'd forget him. Read the book of Judges. I'm not making this stuff up. I mean, that was the cycle. And that's what happened to America. America got fat and happy and we're getting ready to go into judgment. That's what happened to South Africa. That's what's happened to, happening to Europe. The heathens flooding the lands. America, the EU, South Africa. Oh, yeah. And my people shall never be ashamed, verse 27, and ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit, my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. I guess I'm going to be dreaming dreams. Verse 29, And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. People, this is right out of the book of Revelation. Blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. And the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. All right, we're going to go to the book of Obadiah. He's one of the uh, minor prophets. Uh, they call it the minor prophets because of their size, not because of their importance. Now, the Jewish Encyclopedia, like I said, is a wealth of knowledge and depends on what you're looking for. Esau was uh, also, E-S-A-U, is also referred to as Edom, E-D-O-M. The Jewish Encyclopedia says that Edom is in modern Jewry today. There was a guy named Josephus, perhaps you've heard of his works. He was a Jewish historian that lived around the time of Christ. And according to him, King Herod, the, the Herodians, uh, the family of Herod, he said they were of Esau Edom. And remember, it's the Jewish encyclopedia that says Esau Edom is in modern Jewry today. I mean, I'm not making this stuff up. Look it up. Now, listen to Obadiah chapter 1. And we're getting ready to 
do the for oh, uh, the New Testament. Matter of fact, I can hardly wait to get to it. Because uh, believe it, believe it or not, believers are going to see fire also. But the fire that believers are going to face is going to be like the fire that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did in the days of Nebuchadnezzar when they were thrown into the furnace. See, the fire didn't touch them. They went through the fire, but it didn't do them any harm. And, well, you, hopefully you get the right you get the idea. All right, Obadiah 1.1. 1, 1. The vision of Obadiah. Thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. What group of people are really small in number and are greatly despised? Hmm. Remember what the Jewish Encyclopedia said that uh, about Edom? Where are they today? Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. Huh, what group of people does that fit? Hmm, take a guess. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the cliffs of the rocks, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? Though thou exalt thyself, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. If thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Would they not have stolen till they had enough? If the grape gatherers came to thee, would they not leave some grapes? How are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? Now, people, I did a, a, an entire Bible study on why God hated Esau. Of course, the uh, well, those of African descent who uh, have been taught that, oh yeah, white people, yeah, you're Esau. God hates you. We can't wait till the Messiah comes, so you're all killed. We're going to kill you. Yeah. I don't think so, but uh, that's what they believe. And I've never met, I don't know if I've ever met such a wicked, evil, hate, murderous-filled spirit than uh, them. I don't know. How are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in them. Shall I not in that day, saith the Lord, even destroy, destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the mount of Esau? And thy mighty men, O Teman, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. Yeah, and thou shalt be cut off forever. You know, there's people who will tell you, oh, well, yeah, all they got to do is believe in Jesus, and they're going to be, they're going to be saved. Um, and thou shalt be cut off forever? Just remember, Esau married a couple of Hittite, Canaanite women. And he married a daughter of Ishmael, an Arab. I kind of wonder if the uh, Saudi ruddy royal family are of that lineage. I don't know. Verse 11. In the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces and foreigners entered into his gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou wast as one of them. But thou shouldest not have looked 
on the day of thy brother, in the day that he became a stranger. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. Thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Yea, thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. Neither shouldest thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those of his that did escape. See, the people that escaped from Jerusalem, the children of Esau cut them off and kept them from escaping. Neither shouldest thou have delivered up those of his that did remain in the day of distress. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink, and they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had not been. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Listen carefully. And the house of Jacob, remember, Jacob's name was changed by God to Israel. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble. What do you do with stubble? You burn it. And the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord hath spoken it. Does that sound like the Lord's going to offer them salvation? Doesn't sound like it to me. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble. And they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord hath spoken it. And they of the south shall possess the mount of Esau, and they of the plain the Philistines, and they shall possess the uh, fields of Ephraim and the fields of Samaria and Benjamin shall possess Gilead and the captivity of this host of the children of Israel shall possess that of the Canaanites even of Zarephath and the captivity of Jerusalem which is in Shepharad shall possess the cities of the south and saviors shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau and the kingdom and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. All right, let's go to the book of Zechariah. I always get Zephaniah and Zechariah confused. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Z-E-C-H-A-R-I-A-H. -H. Chapter 3. Zechariah chapter 3, verse 1. And he showed me Joshua the high priest. Now, there's the Jews love to tell you, oh no, it's not Joshua, it's Yeshua. Well, you know what? After everything I know about him, I think I'm going to stick with the King James. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Uh, did any of you used to watch westerns? How they would take a cattle brand, a piece of iron, with a, an image on it, a shape, stick it in a fire, get it red hot, and then stick it on the cattle's rear side and burn their flesh with the brand. Well, that's, you know, that's what they're talking about. Uh, those of you that have fireplaces, 
that's, you know, you got a poker and they, they stick the metal in the fire to, and stir up the, uh, the wood and the ashes and what have you. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy, filthy garments. That's the works of the flesh, right? And stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of raiment. What's this new, uh, what's this uh, garment? Well, in Matthew 22, don't we read about the uh, Jesus giving instructions about the wedding? Matthew 22, verse 9, he says, Go ye in, therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall f uh, find, bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he said unto him, Friend, how comest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. And of course, the king commanded that he be bound head and foot and cast into outer darkness, right? Well, uh, aren't we going to be given new garments? Oh, yeah. Personally, I'm kind of of the opinion that the, when the, we're resurrected, we're getting rid of this filthy flesh and we're going to get a new body. Maybe that has an allusion to that. I'm not 100% sure. In Matthew, I'm sorry, Revelation 6 and verse 11. And white robes, white robes, wedding garments, right? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season till their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. In Revelation chapter 7 and verse 13 and 14, And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, Which are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, yeah. Revelation 19, verse 8. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And that's not our righteousness, but that's the righteousness of us in Christ. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Wedding people, the wedding. Let's go back to Zechariah. Oh, let's see. Let's go back to Zechariah 3, 3. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him, and unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of raiment. Now, raiment's clothing, people. And I said, Let them set a fair mitre upon his head. That's a type of hat. So they set a fair mitre upon his head and clothed him with garments, and the angel of the Lord stood by. And the angel of the Lord protested unto Joshua, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, If thou wilt walk in my ways, and if thou wilt keep my charge, then thou shalt also judge my house, and shalt also keep my courts, 
and I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. Hear now, O Joshua, the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wondered at. For behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. Uh, <laughs> we could make a sermon out of that, the branch. In John 15, 5, Jesus said, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. And boy, that's the truth. All right, uh, let's go back to Zechariah. I will bring forth my servant, the branch. Verse 9, For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua, upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave the graving thereof, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will remove, I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, ye shall call every man his neighbor under the vine and under the fig tree. Well, the vine was the uh, symbol of Israel, and the fig tree was the symbol of Judah. All right, sorry about the break there. Um, in Malachi 3, starting in verse 1, Behold, I will send my messenger. And that was John the Baptist, right? And he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord, whom ye seek, shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming? Who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness." Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. I will come near to you in judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adulter adulterers and against false swearers and against those that oppress the hireling in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from his right. And fear, mean, uh, and fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers, you're not gone away, uh, ye are gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye say, Wherewith shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now, herewith saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits 
of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Didn't the United States used to feed the world? I mean, every time there was a natural disaster somewhere across the world, the United States used to be able to send food and feed them. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Your words have been stout against me, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, What have we spoken so much against thee? Ye have said, It is vain, worthless. It is vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we have kept his ordinance that and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? And now we call the proud happy. Yea, they that work wickedness are set up. Yea, they that tempt God are even delivered. Then they that fear the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it, and took a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. All right, this is uh, the end. I guess we're going to hit the New Testament. And that'll be the good part. That'll be the best. Um, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.